My name is Brian Gallup and I'm one of the hosts of the uh, 2013 Northwoods Seminars. And one of the things that I really wanted to make happen was to get my friend Nietzsche out here. And I've always been a huge fan of his work and his eye for design and also his work with tone. And, and Nietzsche was, uh, you were an apprentice of Urban Samanji's, maybe even his second apprentice, correct? Yes. And he picked up a lot of stuff from Irvin as, and also bringing many things in uh, from uh, your art background and your history being Japanese, correct? Yes. And what we have right now is an example of a guitar that I actually saw at the Montreal Guitar Show and I was quite taken with. And the first thing that I noticed was the work that you did on the top. I didn't know what it was, but I think that this is gunpowder that yes. you used. Maybe you could explain a little bit about how you went through, you know, scorching the top with the gunpowder. You have these areas that are darker and the areas that are lighter. That's natural with the gunpowder. It is natural. This original idea is coming from a traditional Japanese instrument called koto. The instrument has a, traditionally has a scorched top, I and mean, then scorched body, actually. I wanted to try it, the same kind of effect to the guitar tops. I noticed that this is a matte finish on the top. Is this nitrocellulose? All right, so first I well, I tried it at the traditional method for the scorching first, which is the heating kind of iron method. But it was too aggressive for the guitar tops was because it? It, it's, it's too thin, the guitar top. So I was looking for the, another way to make a scorch. Then I come to the gunpowder. It's very controllable. Once the scorch happened, did you come back and scuff this a little bit to get these beautiful lines? Yes. After the scorch, uh, it creates a lot of bumps on the spruce. So I had to go to the uh, French polish and fill the whole gaps, but no sanding. The scorching is just on the surface. If you go sanding, it goes to the spruce, uh, natural spruce. So I, no sanding, goes to the French polish with the pumice and fill the whole gaps. Then I shoot it just one or two coats of nitrocellulose right. satin finish. Okay, it's beautiful. <clears throat> and I also notice I can see your rosette. This is a, a, a typical design for you of rosettes. You have the, the, the interrupted lines, but it's really quite simplistic. Some of your other rosettes, you know, they can come down and take a turn or the boxes and the lines, you know, that I've yes. always been a huge fan of, by the way. Thanks so much. But this one here, really, I just like the way that it subtly comes through the burns. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to have, kind of more organic. Absolutely. You can see that uh, it has some of the classic work that you do on bridges. Could you tell me a little bit about your cuts? And this particular one, I tried to, uh, to fit the parallel shape, maybe a 19th century European guitars, but I got, I tried to put my uh, more thought to it, it kind of interpret it on my way. Absolutely. Uh, these cuts are outstanding here and here. Thank you. Many design elements of Michi's tie together like this heel that ties into the work we just looked at on the bridge. It's a delicate little line that almost implies that your palm could fit there, especially on a cutaway guitar. And it cuts in and moves up into this beautiful asymmetrical uh, heel or heel cap. One element ties in from the, the bridge to the, the heel and it'll take you right into the peg head. So Michi, could you tell me a little bit about this? I used a very tiny, tiny tuner, and you can fit into the guitar head. And those tuner buttons, I made those. Those are refers to the also Japanese traditional instruments called the shamisen. And it's got that Japanese and Chinese character, and it says uh, happiness and also longevities. On the peghead, I noticed that we have some of the fine detailed line work that uh, you're so well known for. Could you tell me a little bit about how you did this? This is actually, it's not one piece, it's actually a three piece peg head. And in between, I got uh, maple lines, and also uh, in the between the maple lines, there are dyed veneer, also ebony uh, veneer in between. Along with your perfuming work is the fine work like on the nut. As you go through the guitar, you can pick up so many more details. It's just we don't have enough time to go through it. We're so honored that you could be a part of the Northwood Seminar and thrilled that we can have a chance to look at this instrument. Thanks, Michi. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for this opportunity.